Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So quite a while ago I played around with some wax for use as a heat storage medium. I was testing to see how it compared to water, but what about different types of wax? So here is a block of beeswax. This is two and a quarter pounds of beeswax and just under two pounds of paraffin wax. Just in case you don't know, paraffin wax is the stuff that is usually used for making candles, especially modern and cheap candles. And beeswax is the stuff that honeybees store their honey in. You see here. It's also used in making candles, the more expensive kind. Along with a myriad of other uses. Now, there's a few things that you'll notice right off the bat. Uh, one is the paraffin's got this giant divot in it here, and the beeswax does not. That's because the paraffin shrinks substantially more as it cools than the beeswax does. Beeswax and paraffin have about the same density at room temperature, but when melted, paraffin is less dense. Beeswax does shrink as it cools though, just not by as much. You might also notice that the beeswax has a bit of a, a powdery coating on it, and this forms over time. Uh, paraffin wax does not do that. I think that's actually quite similar to the uh, fat bloom that you get on chocolate sometimes. I'm not entirely certain. It could just be some sort of mold or something. Either way, the reason it's doing that is that this is actually fat. This is bee fat, whereas this is uh, processed crude oil. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, bees actually excrete excess fat. You know, if they eat a bunch, they actually produce these little wax flakes that they chew together and they press into the honeycombs. Another thing you'll notice that the beeswax is, uh, you know, kind of a pale yellow tan color, whereas paraffin is completely clear. Uh, beeswax, when it's just made, is also clear, but it picks up impurities quite easily, you know, tracked in on the feet of the bees, etc. Uh, beeswax can range from anywhere from as white as this paraffin to as black as ink. If you take a piece of beeswax and you just bend it with your fingers, you'll notice it is quite flexible. Paraffin wax usually just breaks. Also, if you do take a piece of beeswax and you do break it, it makes a loud snapping noise. And when you break paraffin, it's more of a thump. You know, it's kind of a dull sound. Now for some things you won't be able to experience on camera, but if you ever get a chance to hold a piece of uh, beeswax, you'll be able to tell. So first of all, when you rub your finger across it, uh, the beeswax actually, since it's old like this, is actually kind of uh, almost slimy as you run your finger across it. The heat from the friction actually kind of melts this uh, powdery coating. But if you wipe that off, or if you have a fresh, clean chunk of beeswax, the beeswax actually is a little bit grabby. Your hand is, you know, kind of very sticky, kind of jumps along as you drag your hand across it. The paraffin wax, you know, no matter what you do with it, it's always going to be pretty slick. Actually, you might be able to hear when I run my finger across the beeswax. You kind of get a squeak. You do not get that with the paraffin. The paraffin just almost sounds like you're just playing with a piece of wood. Another difference is that uh, beeswax smells differently than paraffin. You know, beeswax smells about like the inside of a beehive, or maybe like honey. It's kind of hard to describe smells if you've never smelled them yourself. Whereas the paraffin smells either completely odorless or maybe a little bit like oil, maybe like car's engine oil or something. The beeswax and the paraffin wax have different melting points. And I presume they also have different uh, heat capacities and stuff, and that's actually kind of what I want to find out today. So we're going to melt these both down, put them back in the molds with some thermometers, and then I'm going to time lapse them cooling off. So let's uh, go melt these down. Okay, so I've got two pans set up. Two identical thermometers. I'm going to pour in the melted paraffin. Just like that. And now for the melted beeswax. Okay. 
Good enough. We've also got a third thermometer here, which is just reading the ambient temperature. Now I'm going to attempt to kind of set these up so that the thermometer will sit sort of in the middle of the wax. So the thermometer's up so you can read them. You can see the two waxes are just about the same temperature. So now we'll just let them cool off. So you might see it in the time lapse, but I ended up taking a piece of wire and suspending the two thermometer probes in the same position up off the metal. That way I'm reading the actual temperature of the center of the wax. I figured that'd be better. As you can see, the two temperatures of the wax are fairly close. The paraffin is a little cooler, but it's still too close to tell which one cools off faster. Again, this will probably be in the time lapse, but I'm digging the thermometer probes out of the wax just so that I can put them in a glass of water to confirm that they're all agree with each other. One thing I'm noticing is the beeswax, it was much harder to remove the probe than it was with the paraffin. Probably something to do with its flexibility. Anyway, into the cup. There we are. All the thermometers agree within a degree. <laughs> so I'm sure the folks over on Reddit can do a much better job, but here's my stab at analyzing the data. As you can see, I started off by plotting every 5 minutes and then switched over to every 30 minutes. The two cooling curves have about the same general form. The temperature drops until it reaches the melting point, which is the same as the freezing point. The temperature holds more or less stable for a long period of time, and then once all the wax has solidified, it continues to cool off. Of course, it's not perfect. This phase change, of course, is why wax is so much better at storing heat than water is. The only major difference that I can see between these two graphs is that the beeswax curve is always above the paraffin curve. And this makes sense. Beeswax has a higher melting point than paraffin. And that is, of course, why it hurts so much more when you stick your finger into a beeswax candle than it does to stick your finger into a paraffin wax candle. The beeswax is hotter and it burns you faster. So there you have it. A few differences between beeswax and paraffin wax. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.